Hello everyone, Man of Interest here, and it's time for This Week in Keyboards, which is your weekly roundup for group buys, interest checks, and teasers in this community. At the end of this episode, I'll be letting you know who won the 3K subs giveaway for the Hex Gears Impulse with putting caps, as well as the two winners for our ZOPC coupon gift card giveaway. Sorry for the late upload, by the way. Life's been pretty busy, but I'm slowly getting back on track for video releases. I hope. Of course, first off is the sponsor for today, Novel Keys. Over on Novel Keys, you can check out the Fae switches, FEI switches, now in stock, as well as the excellent Novel Keys cream switches. Check out these awesome switches, as well as many others, through the link in the description. Use this month's promo code SWITCHES for 5% off your order. Thanks, Mike. Now let's get on with the news. Starting this week is the set that many have been looking forward to, GMK Lime, a set designed by King Nesty and currently running over on Kono.store. At $175, the base set does seem pretty pricey, but upon closer inspection, we can see why. The compatibility is pretty decent, but that's not what's driving the base kit price up. It's the inclusion of those double shot novelties. I think that's probably the most controversial part of the kit for GMK Lime. With some historical examples, we can look at Red Samurai. It looks like typically one half of participants in group buys buy the novelties. If you look at GMK Serica, it's a bit more than half. I'm actually in the camp that normally doesn't buy novelties, so this is an interesting set to consider and look at from that perspective. Are the inclusion of novelties for the price bump a make it or break it for you if you're considering this set? The set will be running until April 25th with an estimated delivery in August. Still on Kono's store, we move on to our next topic, the Kira Stealth. Teased at the Bay Area Mechanical Keyboard Meetup back in November, the Kira Stealth is the all aluminum case version of the Kira. Without those loud R's, G's, and B's from below, it'll be stealth before it's being caught up by that price tag. $270 if you're picking up this keyboard without switches, $299 otherwise. Weighing in at 5.2 pounds, the case certainly has heft, and if it's based on the existing Kira bottom, there may be some hollowness in the bottom that could cause some concern. That could be easily resolved with sorbosane, sorbothane, or some other kind of foam. Although, I wonder how different the bottom may be since the site does list that the Kira Stealth was brought to us by Heavy Shell not Kono, so maybe these folks made a change or two to the bottom since the original plastic bottoms were injection molded and these are CNC'd. I think a lot of people are still gonna look forward to this. USB-C, fully programmable per key RGB, heft. If you don't get it with switches, you still get the keycaps, so that's nice, so you don't have to worry about that. I think my Kira is decent, but I think this Kira Stealth is a better bet. Kono has been keeping busy because I have one more topic for this week from Kono, and it's big. It's their announcement for the Keystone Mechanical Keyboard. So, what's unique about the Keystone? The switches. The switches will be a marriage between analog and Hall FX switches. Working with Kaiwa, they've made these new switches, which they are dubbing the Silo Hall Effect Analog Switches. So what's a Hall Effect switch? It's a switch that uses a magnet and a sensor to determine actuation. And the analog portion, that means the keyboard can detect how far down you are on each press. This means you could configure where your actuation point is per key, and you can also program the travel to correspond with whatever you'd like. They're advertising the new switches to have a durability of a billion, yes, billion with a B, presses, which is far past the normal 50 million that Cherry and most others advertise. The switches will be hot swappable, and that's because there's going to be three kinds. A linear, clicky, and tactile version of the silo switches. I think this is one of the projects that people should be paying attention to, not because of its, you know, the fact it's a full-size keyboard, eh, but the fact that this switch technology could make an interesting difference in our community. Check out in the description down below. I'll be following this and hopefully soon I'll be able to bring you guys some awesome Huey Insider information. Next up, we moved to Geek Hack for the Jur Mini by Frosty Love. This is the second keyboard designed by the Jur team and we have the official group buy. Just like their previous keyboard, the Jur A06, this keyboard will also be manufactured by Eve, which many people will appreciate. 
for the price of $3.39 plus shipping plus 5% PayPal fee. The Germ Mini is the case, plate, PCB, and weight. And I wish there was more information like what's the weight of the keyboard, what's the typing angle, the programming details. But overall, it does look nice and clean. I'm still bummed that the Jur team chose not to revisit their top mounted PCB typing feel for the Jur A06. Next up are Sonic switches, and these are an interesting one to talk about. This is from Enjoy, the same person who designed GMK Waves, as these are switches designed to match that key sets. The color of the stems and housings are going to be dyed to match, and only one round of these switches will be produced. The weird thing is that there are two variants, the tactile version and the linear version. The tactile version will be a recolor of the KBD Fan's T1 switch, while the linear switches will be recolors of the Gatoron yellow switches. So this is odd because they're uh, switches advertised in the same line, but we have different details about the both. Uh, the MOQ for the tactile version is 25,000 with each switch costing approximately 55 cents, while the linear ones have an MOQ, sorry, of 20,000 and a TBD on the price. These days, recolored switches do seem to be pretty popular, so this is a continuation of that trend, which also takes advantage of the hype that many people have around the GMK Waves set. So, are you into color swapped switches or do you not care about them? Let me know what you think. Next up is GMK Skedata over at the Key Company. For $129, you're getting a decently supported base kit with what looks like to be enough support for what most people would want. Skidetta is a pretty classic set that began its life on the classic Skidetta board that was manufactured by GMK between 1995 and 2000. With an alluring orange on charcoal, the set and keyboard has found many fans and still continues to find love to this day as evidenced by this group buy. The price of the base set is decently priced, but the all orange mods with that blue accent, it feels quite out of place at $120. None of the other sets seem ridiculously crazy though, which is fine. The group buy will be running until August 9th with shipping expected, sorry, running until April 9th and the shipping will be expected in August. Our next topic is the Primus, Primus, which is posted by iLouisX07 on behalf of Thesis Camper. This is a 75% keyboard with an arrow blocker and separated F keys. The plate is sandwiched with at least one gasket since the board is described as a gasket mount. The PCB will feature a Type-C connector and the typing angle will be 8 degrees. Something interesting and maybe a bit old school is MOQs for different colors. By default we have silver and black with three other unknown colors releasing at 100, 150, and 200 MOQ. The PCB will be designed by Utsi, which means that at least if we go by historical precedent it will be programmed via boot mapper clients. Not the most popular option but one that works well enough for the general person. There's still a lot of information that we need, but I think what we have based so far is pretty decent. It's a nice looking board. I like that weight accent on the bottom. I like how the top overhangs uh, on front of the keyboard, or the back of the keyboard. I think this keyboard is gonna be quite the looker when it releases. Last in the news, we have GMK slash SA Sunday Morning by Abic13. This colorway was inspired by the album Songs About Jane by Maroon 5, which is definitely you know, it features a quite a bit of the colors in that album art. So it does look like some research has been done on Abix part, as he or she has, to the best of their ability, matched the actual album they own to Pantones. This is very early in development. I mean, it's so early that Abic is still deciding between sculpted SA and GMK after all. I think the gloss of SA versus the finish of GMK will impart a very different look on each set, even with the same colors. So Abic, you need to choose carefully of what you're going to end up going for the keycaps. My favorite song from the album would have to be Sunday Morning. How about you? Well, that's all the news I have for this week, but it's time to get on with the giveaway winners. Last week, I hit 3K subs, which thank you to all of you wonderful people watching. And in celebration, I hailed a giveaway on both the YouTube video when I, where I announced it, as well as my Discord. So, who won the Hex Gears Impulse with Pudding Caps? And the winner is... Kim Zhu, thank you so much for your comment and I hope ev you and everyone else continue to watch and enjoy the content I put out. The winners for the Discord $50 Zeal gift cards were Polly Zhu and Bruick. All winners, please PM me on Discord for your prize. Thank you everyone so much. Also thanks to all of my sponsors 
for their continued support. Check them out when you get a chance. Stay tuned as more videos will be posted this week and they should be pretty fun. Also this Wednesday on my stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, we'll be doing episode two of the Cool Board. So if you wanna join in and let me know where you think the next batch of keyboards, key sets, and switches should go on that cool board, hop in stream and we can decide together. Hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.